Sutra. At that time, Vada Treasury Bodhisattva addressed Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva, saying, Disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva who has already purified the third ground and who wishes to enter the fourth, the ground of blazing wisdom, should cultivate ten jaws for understanding the drama. What are the ten? They are contemplating realms of living beings, contemplating realms of drama, contemplating realms of wounds, contemplating realms of empty space, contemplating realms of desire, contemplating realms of form, contemplating realms of formlessness, contemplating realms of vast mind, faith, and understanding. The Bodhisattva, using these ten kinds of doors for understanding drama, obtains entry to the fourth ground, that of blazing wisdom. Commentary When the Great Assembly and Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva had finished speaking the preceding verses at that time, Vada Treasury Bodhisattva addressed Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva, saying, Disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, the Great Bodhisattva, who has been cultivating and has already purified the third ground, having well cultivated and purified it, so he has been certified to it, and who wishes to enter the fourth, the ground of blazing wisdom, at that time should cultivate the ten doors for understanding drama. What are the ten? They are contemplating realms of living beings, contemplating all the various causes and conditions underlying the realms of living beings, contemplating realms of drama, what period the drama has reached, whether it is the proper drama age, the drama semblance age, or the drama ending age, contemplating realms of worlds, contemplating all the living beings of world realms and what period the world systems themselves have reached in the cycle of coming into being, dwelling, decaying, and going empty. Contemplating realms of empty space, what drama should be spoken upon contemplation of the realm of empty space, contemplating realms of consciousness, contemplating the realm of consciousness of all living beings, contemplating realms of desire, what desires living beings have and which dramas need to be employed and save living beings in the heavens of the desire realm. Contemplating realms of form, what methods need to be used to rescue living beings in the heavens of the form realm. Contemplating realms of formlessness, what means to employ to cross over living beings in the heavens of the formless realm. Contemplating realms of vast minds, faith and understanding, what level of understanding has been reached by the living beings in the heavens who have vast minds. Contemplating realms of great minds, faith, and understanding. What level of understanding has been attained by beings in the heavens who possess great minds? Those who are about to undertake cultivation of the Bodhisattva way. The Bodhisattva, using these ten kinds of doors for understanding Dharma, obtains entry to the fourth ground that of blazing wisdom. By employing those ten kinds of doors of understanding drama, he can enter the position of the fourth ground on which one's wisdom is as bright as a blazing fire. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva, while dwelling on this, the ground of blazing wisdom, they can, by using ten kinds of wisdom for maturing dharmas, obtain those internal dramas and be born in the first come one's household. What are the ten? They are by having a deep mind that does not retreat, by giving rise to pure faith in the triple jewel, which is ultimately indestructible, by contemplating the production and extinction of all activities, by contemplating the non-production of the self-nature of all dramas, by contemplating the comings into being and destructions of world realms, by contemplating how there is production because of karma, by contemplating birth and death and nirvana, by contemplating the karma of living beings and countries, 
by contemplating the boundary of before and the boundary of afterwards, by contemplating what has no exhaustion. Those are the ten disciples of the Buddha. The Bodhisattva who dwells upon this, the fourth ground, contemplates inside his body, making a methodical contemplation of the body, diligently and heroically is mindful of wisdom and expels worldly greed and worry. Commentary Why the Treasury Bodhisattva comes out again. All of you disciples of the Buddha, do you know that the Bodhisattva, while dwelling on this, the fourth ground, the ground of blazing wisdom, they can, by using the ten kinds of wisdom for maturing dhammas, employing ten kinds of wisdom to contemplate and bring to maturity all dhammas that he cultivates, obtain those internal dhammas, dhammas pertaining to the mind within, and be born in the first common household. He is born in the family of the Buddha. What are the ten? The ten kinds of wisdom through which one can bring internal dramas to maturity. They are by having a deep mind that does not retreat. The Bodhisattva brings forth a deep resolve, a great resolve, and never retreats from his resolve for body. It is also by giving rise to pure faith in the triple jewel. He is able to produce pure belief in the triple jewel, which is ultimately indestructible. That pure resolve for body will never be destroyed or disappeared. It is also by contemplating the production and extinction of all activities. He contemplates how all activities are produced and destroyed and are all impermanent. It is also by contemplating the non production of the self nature of all dharmas. The self nature of all dharmas has no production and no destruction. The reason being that all dhammas are characterized by still extinction, having no substance of their own, but being the product of causes and conditions. Therefore, it is said, dhammas produced from causes and conditions, I proclaim, are empty. On the one hand, they are called false names, on the other, called the meaning of the middle way. It is also by contemplating the comings into being and destructions of world realms, how world systems come into being, dwell, decay, and go empty, and he brings forth a great resolve for body. By contemplating how there is production because of karma, it is due to karma that all causes and retributions are brought about. By contemplating birth and death and nirvana, he contemplates what is meant by birth and death and what is not being born and not dying, that is nirvana. By contemplating the karma of living beings and countries, all beings born in a given country create a certain kind of karma and undergo a certain kind of retribution. By contemplating the boundary of before and the boundary of afterwards, he also contemplates how all false thoughts, the preceding thought and the thought after it are produced. By contemplating what has no exhaustion, he contemplates how there is not exhaustion to living beings and no exhaustion to afflictions or any end to empty space. Those are the ten. He makes those ten kinds of contemplations. Disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva who dwells upon this, the fourth ground, the ground of blazing wisdom, contemplating inside his body, making a methodical contemplation in order of what is inside the body, diligently and heroically is mindful of wisdom, mindful of all wisdom, and expels worldly greed and worry. He gets rid of the kind of greedy, craving worldly people have and their kinds of worries and anxieties. If anyone who has committed offenses can change, repent of them, and reform, then those offenses can disappear. If you cover them up and don't want to change, the offenses remain. When the Buddha was in the world, if any bishu or bishuni had committed an offense, he or she had to make a public repentance of it in front of everyone. 
This is as when your clothes are dirty and you wash them so they are clean again. When your mind crowd is not bright and luminous, if you repent, that brightness can return to your mind crowd. You go back to your original wisdom. What prevents your inherent wisdom from appearing is because each of us puts on a false mask and tries to keep other people from seeing what is wrong with us. That's why the Buddha instructed people to repent. Sometimes someone doesn't know what his or her offenses are, and if someone else knows what the offenses are, they should bring up to enable that person to return to purity. It was that way when the Buddha was in the world and is known as the proper Dharma dwelling in the world. Afterwards, The bishops and bishonis forgot about repenting and covered up their offenses. The Dharma therefore declined day by day. Now in this country, we are emphasizing the proper Dharma, and so no matter who has that what offense, if they can make a public repentance of it before the great assembly, after repenting and reforming, they return to purity. If you don't repent, you will always have blackness stored away in your self-nature. If you speak out and let others know of it, then you can go back to the basic purity of your fundamental nature. In cultivation, the essential thing is not to be selfish and to have no thought of benefiting the self to have no self. If something is harmful to oneself but of benefit to a larger group, one should not hesitate to do it. If something is beneficial to oneself but harmful to the group, to the group at large, then you can't do it. So one takes what is beneficial to the large group as important and is willing to divide up one's body and grind up one's bones to benefit the larger group. But if something has no public benefit but benefits oneself, even if it only means doing a hand's worth of harm to the group so as to reap an enormous amount of benefit for oneself, one must not do it. So you shouldn't be selfish and then you can accomplish the way cultivated by a bodhisattva. Sutra, he contemplates outside his body, making a methodical contemplation of the body, diligently and heroically is mindful of wisdom, and expels worldly greed and worry. He contemplates inside and outside his body, making a methodical contemplation of the body, diligently and heroically is mindful of wisdom, and expels worldly greed and worry. In the way, he contemplates inner feelings, outer feelings, inner and outer feelings, making a methodic contemplation of feelings. He contemplates the inner mind, the outer mind, the inner and outer mind, making a methodic contemplation of the mind. He contemplates inner dramas, outer dramas, inner and outer dramas, making a methodic contemplation of dramas. Diligently and heroically is mindful of wisdom and expels worldly greed and worry. Commentary He contemplates outside his body, signs, sounds, smells, tastes, and objects of touch are what is outside the body. He contemplates that, making a methodical contemplation of the body. He follows along the body in order, contemplation all the myriad things and events outside the body, all of which speak drama. If you realize that everything is speaking drama, you will thoroughly understand the real mark of all dramas. He makes that systematic contemplation of the body, diligently and heroically mindful of wisdom, and expels worldly greed and worry. He is heroically vigorous at all times. We need to know how constantly to return the light and look within, and see how to expel all worldly greed and love, and all worldly worry and anxiety. He contemplates inside his body and outside his body, making a methodical contemplation of the body. Both of the five skandhas inside his body form, feeling, thinking, activities, and consciousness 
and of the six dusts outside his body sights, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dramas. Again, he cultivates diligently and heroically, is mindful of all wisdom, and expels worldly greed and worry. We shouldn't have any greed for worldly fame or profit, unlike some left home people who are greedy for offerings. When someone donates a red envelope, we quick think, there must be a lot of money in it. Then, when they open it and take a look, it's just a dollar, and they are incredibly disappointed, all because of greed. In that way, he contemplates inner feelings, outer feelings, inner and outer feelings, making a methodical contemplation of feelings. He contemplates like that, returning the light and turning back the illumination in a very detailed investigation of what his inner emotional feelings are all about, as well as the feelings coming from outside. He also looks into what feelings that are both internal and external alike, thus methodically contemplating feelings. He contemplates the inner mind, the outer mind, the inner and outer mind, making a methodical contemplation of the mind. He looks at what the mind inside is like and what is the mind outside is like, along with what inner and outer minds working together are all about. He investigates in systematic contemplation of the conscious mind. He contemplates the inner dramas, outer dramas, inner and outer dramas, making a methodical contemplation of dramas. He contemplates all the dramas inside and all the dramas external to the body, along with internal and external dramas. Systematically contemplating dramas, Again, having to do so diligently with vigor and heroically mindful of all wisdom and expels worldly greed and worry, every kind of greed and anxiety worldly people have. We who have left home, who have left the home life, should leave the home of the three realms, the home of the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm. We should also leave the home of afflictions by cutting all of them off. We also have to leave the home of the mundane, which means dispelling worldly greed and worry is easy to say, but very hard to do. Yet even so, the harder it is, the more you have to do it. If you don't do it because it's hard, it will never get done, as it is said. Human needs is difficult at first, but afterwards are quiet. If you want to master human needs, you first must go through some very difficult experiences, and after that you come to have kindly and human concern for other people. Sutra Furthermore, to prevent all evil and unwholesome dramas which have not yet arisen from arising, that Bodhisattva wishes to bring forth diligent vigor and mix up his mind to properly cut them off, to cut off all evil and unwholesome dramas which have already arisen. He wishes to bring forth diligent vigor and mix up his mind to properly cut them off in order to cause all wholesome dramas which have not yet arisen to arise. He wishes to bring forth diligent vigor and mix up his mind to properly cultivate them in order to cause all wholesome dramas which have already arisen to remain and not be lost. He cultivates to increase and extend them. He wishes to bring forth diligent vigor and mix up his mind to properly cultivate them. Commentary, the text text has not finished explaining about how casting out all worldly greed and worry brings forth world transcending bliss, and so it continues in more detailed explanation, saying, Furthermore, after having cultivated the third ground of emitting light and being on the ground of blazing wisdom, to prevent all evil and unwholesome dramas which have not yet arisen from arising, that Bodhisattva wishes to bring forth diligent vigor, 
so that all evil thoughts and unwholesome dramas which have not arisen in his mind will not arise. He wants to be courageous, which is identical with being diligent and vigorous, and he makes up his mind with a great resolve for body to proper cut them off. He wants to keep all those evil and unwholesome dramas from arising and wants to cut off all evil and unwholesome dramas which have already arisen. No matter who you are or what kind of offense you've committed, if you can cut off those evil, unwholesome dramas, the body's three feeling, um, three evil acts up, killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, the mouths for evil acts of lewd, false, harsh, and double-tongued speech, and the mind's three evil acts of greed, hatred, and stupidity, then you stop creating that kind of bad karma. In order to do that, he, the Bodhisattva, wishes to bring forth diligent vigor, act with the utmost courage, and makes up his mind in a great resolve for body, so probably cut them off, evil not yet arisen should be prevented from arising and if it's already arisen one cuts it off but what about good and wholesome dramas in order to cause all wholesome dramas which have not yet arisen to arise that is not being greedy angry or stupid or stupid not killing stealing or committing sexual misconduct not speaking loosely falsely harshly or in a double-tongued manner which together constitute the ten wholesome acts of refraining from the ten kinds of evil karma. He wishes to bring forth diligent vigor and mix up his mind to properly cultivate them. Again, one must be courageous in one's vigor, be greatly resolved on body, and actually go and do the work in order to cause all wholesome dramas which have already arisen to remain and not be lost, to hang on to those good dramas which have come into being, he cultivates to increase and extend them. He wishes to bring forth diligent, courageous Michael and makes up his mind to properly, reliable and actually cultivate them. So those days of wholesome dramas daily expand and grow. Sutra. Moreover, this Bodhisattva cultivates the samadhi of zeal, cutting off activities and accomplishes the basis of psychic power, relying on disgust, relying on living, relying on extinction, and makes transference to renunciation. He cultivates the samadhi of vigor, the samadhi of thoughts, the samadhi of contemplation, cutting off activities and accomplishes the basis of psychic power, relying on disgust, relying on living, relying on extinction, and makes transference to renunciation. Commentary, moreover, continues Vara Treasury Bodhisattva. This Bodhisattva we've been talking about cultivates the samadhi of zeal. This is the first of the four bases of psychic power among the 37 wings of enlightenment. The stations of the body share dramas which the Bodhisattva was previously described as taking rebirth in order to perfect. This includes cutting off of all evil activities while bringing forth all good conduct. There are eight cutting off activities, conducts of severance. Zeal to do so, diligence of applied effort, faith in what is certified to securing oneself in joy, mindfulness, dwelling in stopping, shamatha, proper knowledge, dwelling in contemplate, uh, contemplating, vipassana, reflection, one's mind operating according to stopping and contemplating. Renunciation of views of states that appear. And the Bodhisattva thus accomplishes the basis of psychic power, the fruit of samadhi. He does this by relying on disgust for all Dharma doors of evil actions, by relying on leaving them, cutting them off, by relying on 
extinction of those doors to evil conduct, and he makes transference to renunciation. He transfers this to the cultivation of all practices of giving. One must give away that one cannot bear to part with and put down what one does not want to let go of. He cultivates the samadhi of Vigo, always keep at his cultivation of samadhi, which is the second basis of psychic power. He also cultivates the samadhi of thought so that his mind in samadhi is not moved by the eight winds. The eight winds, approval, ridicule, suffering, happiness, benefit, devastation, acclaim, bad repute, and sometimes gain, loss. That means if someone praises you, your mind does not move and is also unmoving if people make fun of you. No matter how much suffering you undergo, you don't feel it's bitter and whatever happiness you experience, you don't feel happy. You're not moved by outer states or inward emotions. Benefit is when you obtain some personal advantages, while devast uh, devastation means you undergo harm. But if neither situation moves you, your mind, your thought is in somebody. Then, too, you may be acclaimed and enjoy fame and have bad repute and be slandered, or else you may get something or lose it. If your mind remains unmoved, when those eight winds blow, then you have samadhi power. But if you become delighted at a few words of praise from someone or upset when scolded just a little, you've been all stirred by those winds from outside proof that you like samadhi power. If you had it, you would be such that the eyes see forms and shapes but inside there is nothing. The ears hear defiling matters, but the mind does not know. Then you have a bit of samadhi power, but not yet the total amount. And he cultivates the samadhi of contemplation. Imamsa, often worldly wisdom, of whether or not his samadhi has reached accomplishment, cutting off all evil activities and in that way, he accomplishes the basis of psychic power, which are one of the six types of spiritual penetrations, also called the penetrations of spiritual states. He does this by relying on disgust for all worldly dramas, by relying on leaving them all behind, by relying on extinction of all evil practice of worldly dramas, and makes transference to renunciation. He transfers this to the Dharma draw of giving.